Valmethus Cooking is made possible in part by the following. Appliances donated by Crane Appliance. Kitchen installation donated by M. Duffany Builders. Specialty Studio Electric and Gallery installation donated by David Rogers Electric. Kitchenware donated by Eastman's Hardware. Welcome to Falmouth is Cooking. I'm Gail Blakely, your host for this half hour, where we talk about everything food in uh, Falmouth and uh, mostly the Upper Cape, uh, but uh, we usually get around to cooking as well, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Um, again, I need to say to you that if you just would invest in smell -a vision you would have a great <laughs> aroma from <laughs> the cookies that we have made here. Um, but we don't have that yet. Maybe they will before I retire. I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, today I have a, a wonderful guest who I'm very pleased that you Thank were able you. to come in. Thank Vicki you. Harris uh, has been featured in my food column, Gourmets and Good Eaters. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, um, when I went to see her, she actually, I met you through volunteering at Highfield, mm -hmm. and uh, where I teach cooking, and uh, um, I was just astounded. I re was rereading the column this morning, and I said that if, um, you know, if I felt like Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, because when we walked around <laughs> the yard, which is almost two acres, correct? Yes, yes. Um, there were chickens and plants mm -hmm. and wonderful stuff, and it was like, oh my, is what it was, <laughs> you know? It was just a wonderful, Thank wonderful you. experience. Thank so, you. Uh, and uh, Vicki gave me an unbelievable treat to take home, which I have here. This is my jar. I have another one that I'm hoarding. And this one is the raspberry jam mm -hmm. that Vicki makes. Uh, and I really think that what is superb about this is the timing of the picking. Mm -hmm. I really Absolutely. think that that's, that I imagine that you go out and taste mm -hmm. raspberries every day. What a terrible job I to know. have to have. I know. And uh, um, then um, make, the, make the jam. Mm -hmm. So the recipe for this jam is going to be on, uh, online as well as um, a couple pictures and uh, a, pi a recipe for Vicky's uh, raspberry jam. Yes. Um, award-winning. Award You're winning. supposed to remind me award to say winning that. Award-winning raspberry jam. <laughs> okay. Barnstable County Fair, award-winning. All right, but before we get to that, here's what we're going to be taking a look at right here. Um, I wanted Vicki to have one, but she said, no, it looked too pretty, so we're not doing it yet. My audience has already sampled, so I know that they know what it's like. Mm -hmm. um, tell me about edible landscaping and how you got into that, because for someone like me, it's, it's rather daunting. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, how did you, you moved here when? In 1989, okay. we moved uh, here. We were married that same year, mm -hmm. uh, purchased a home and mm -hmm. moved down. And my husband is really the gardener. He is the, the farmer gardener. He grew up on uh, Ball Hill in Northborough, which okay. is uh, apple and peach orchards, wow. Tugis Farm and um, Davidians Farm. And he worked there during the summers, and it was almost a, a part of his fiber, um, his fabric. And when, when we moved to our home, he planted uh, two apple trees, two Granny Smiths, a delicious, and a peach tree. Okay. And so now, of course, it's in abundance. So we have apples and peaches and uh, Italian plum tree we okay. just added. Okay. So therefore, mm. the landscape. Prune plums. Edible. I just wrote about mm. Italian prune mm -hmm. plums. Is They'll, that what it well, is? We're coming. Be? They're coming. They're coming. Okay. Plums are coming. Everything okay. else is here. So when you chose your property, you knew that this was something you wanted to do. So you literally chose a house or a place. Was the house built or did you? No, actually, we. it was one of my father was a, um, a developer mm -hmm. and um, in, had eight lots 
going mm -hmm. in this uh, subdivision, new subdivision. So it was one of his homes. And we realized that uh, the property, the peninsula that we live on in Minot is uh, farming, was a farming strawberry and blueberry fresh native uh, strawberry and blueberry farms. Right, as, as so, so much of East Falmouth. Exactly. So it was, was just yeah. natural, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, almost that we decided to plant and harvest uh, our fruits and our vegetables and mm -hmm. uh, added to that landscape. Okay. So, and we, we love cooking and gardening and utilizing the produce. And you look at this, you certainly do a good job. Thank Everything you. except for the um, <laughs> the extracts. <laughs> the extracts, the extracts are not mine. I couldn't come up with. <laughs> and this is my maple extract that we're going to show you how we use it in baking the cookies um, mm -hmm. in a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so you had the trees, you planted the trees, mm -hmm. and then did you, you lived for a while and then said, here's where we want to start the garden? Is that yes, what you we did? kept expanding our space mm -hmm. for gardening. And my husband, again, grew up with uh, a vegetable garden, mm -hmm. as did I, uh, in Denham and in Falmouth. Um, we summered in North Falmouth. We always had a garden. So what, what did you grow this summer and what worked and what didn't work this summer? Oh, so every year is always a uh, unique experience as far sure. as the amount of rain and uh, climate. So and we had a rainy year, summer. We had a rainy summer. So the uh, tomatoes are amazing. Mm -hmm. And our uh, pickling cucumbers okay. are um, in abundance in this yes okay. so this was um, this is also one of my recipes of uh, famous dill pickles okay. that um, is their the recipe is very coveted from all of my yeah, that was, son's friends I was going to say that's why we uh, um, we call them the, um, the Vicky's what what did you just say um, star no my award-winning award -winning and, award and special special um, special raspberry jam and yep. special i personally think everything is probably pretty special uh, that you do well, you. but uh, we also have the liquid gold in a jar which mm -hmm. speaks to what you were just talking about yes. with the tomatoes because when when things are in abundance you have to come up with additional recipes to um you know you don't want to get tired of the same recipes mm -hmm. salsa mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, which i make um, every year mm -hmm. is the salsa mm -hmm. with all of the extra ingredient uh, produce, the tomatoes, the peppers, um, onions, and jalapenos. Everything goes into the salsa. And they're all grown salsa. right there? All grown from our garden. But this is a special recipe that I created. It's liquid gold in a jar that is a concentrated tomato, um, scallion, basil, and um, uh, Basil, scallion, garlic, tomato, onion. no onions. No garlic? Garlic, okay. yes, garlic. You, you add that in and roast it uh, in convection oven until it's ch almost charred, and you just mm -hmm. add mm. the basil in at the end for um, so it doesn't burn, and just the flavors, the flavor is amazing. So I put this in omelets with a little uh, mm. mozzarella. We also talked about, what was the cheese that you suggested? Mascarpone you could add that as well, but it's the most delicious in an omelet. Also, you could add a few tablespoons in um, to your vegetables or orzo on the si as a side dish, mm. and it just adds such an intense tomato flavor with the, with the scallions. Okay, so. Vicki told me I could have this, so I'm sampling it already. Mm. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank Look you. at this stuff. Thank just you. to even drizzle this mm -hmm. over bread, that's it also on a um, toasted oh. Italian garlic bread. Mm. You could put mm. that on as an appetizer. Mm. It's just a well, wonderful, versatile okay. Uh, recipe. Okay, liquid gold. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. You're right. welcome. It just and the chard is really nice yes. too. Yes, yes, yeah, really. just adds adds to it. So keeps okay. me very busy. In and the, the special jam and the other. And then what? It, what else did we look at when um, it was just oh. coming in when I went to see you? It was. Um, the summer, we have summer, summer squash. squash. It's very much in abundance this year. I, I almost, it's too Don't much. Don't you think that's the water, the, the amount of water? Yes, the yeah. summer squash, you just, you, I can't give enough of it away and you can only cook with it so much. But um, zucchini, mm -hmm. not as much summer squash. Really, um, the yellow guys, mm -hmm. huh? The summer squash. Also, we grow butternut squash, we'll, we'll, which we enjoy all winter long. We pick, we pick our butternut squash, put it downstairs in our uh, little, oil burner room and um, 
we still have, I think, two left from last year. Whoa. Two, two butternut squash. That's so wonderful. That's a nice winter. And you have them on a, on a cage almost. On yes. A, yes. Yeah, talk about that. I think that this is a really interesting farming technique that I never it, knew about. It is. It's um, to gain a little bit more room in our garden. Um, so to avoid the mold and mm -hmm. mildew, which occurs when it becomes humid. After a rain, uh, the, some of the plants get that mildewy mm -hmm. um, phenomenon. Mm -hmm. So to prevent overcrowding, my husband built a frame off of the raised bed, which houses um, the vines for the butternut squash, and it just trails over. It's about eight feet mm -hmm. long, and mm -hmm. it's completely it's covered amazing. now yeah. with um, the vines and the butternut squash that are hanging. That are hanging so we just there. cut those oh, off yeah. in the fall. And um, we went through a, um, techniques of oiling. I just, I basically just use Clorox wipe and wipe them off, any bacteria off, and just put them right in the root oh. cellar. I don't oil them. I found that that actually caused more it's interesting. of um, rot. Stuff to grow on them or, mm -hmm. or whatever to mm -hmm. sort of deteriorate. And it's easier. <laughs> and it's easier. <laughs> less work, less work too. So did you do the Barnstable Fair this year? I did not. You did not? I did okay. not do. Barnesville County Fair. Okay. I, uh, you did before. I have. Okay, and your mm -hmm. jam has won awards. Mm -hmm. Your pickles have won awards. The pickles have not, but this oh. is a fan favorite of your my your children. Mm -hmm. And this um, pickle recipe actually was the go-to for the day, the morning after partying mm -hmm. all night long. <laughs> His friends would come and steal the pickles for the electrolytes. So they would come and drink the juice oh my from Lord. the pickles, and then all of them asked for it whenever we went up to visit him. <laughs> so as a result for his wedding, we um, <laughs> had little idea. jars of pickles in each of the welcome bags for oh, all of his roommates, nice. all of his college roommates. Oh, nice. So they were thrilled. They were thrilled. Thank Let's you. talk about books for a second. Yes. Because Vicki brought a couple of, uh, of wonderful ones. I know, with all my little, um, little tags, you think yeah. that this is all I do. At night, but <laughs> I do love reading cookbooks, and I cannot go on vacation without buying a cookbook. So okay. whenever my husband, I could get home, or you know, I'm off with friends, he'll say, "Oh, what did you get?" And I'll say, "What else? A cookbook." But right. Right. this is my Me too, by the way. all-time favorite. Me too. You too. You too. Always cookbooks. Yeah. Yes. Always cookbooks. But this one, um, small batch preserving, mm -hmm. is a great a great one because yeah. yes, you get. It's overwhelming when mm -hmm. everything comes at once. Oh. So what I have found is also... 20 years ago it was published. Mm -hmm. You found what? That in many cases, if you make a mistake, mm -hmm. it's very disheartening when you have um, eight eggplants mm -hmm. that you sliced up to make a pickled eggplant, mm -hmm. and for some reason they're mold, it, they get moldy Doesn't or bacteria gets in, mm -hmm. um, you know, even if you're trying to go exactly by the recipes, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. should really go by the small batch sizing. Because if you uh -huh. double, triple, quadruple the recipe, in, in many cases, it doesn't work. Because, and huh. also you lose quite a bit of uh, produce when you have a, a mistake like that. Absolutely. Like that, Absolutely. So. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, that's fair. Especially the raspberry jam. The raspberry jam, I oh, would no. say, I have tried to triple the recipe. If you ever have some that you don't like, call me. <laughs> no, you wouldn't want it. You wouldn't want it. It's it turns brown. It gets um, a burnt flavor. So oh. if you leave it on the stove just a few seconds too long, mm -hmm. it's it, it it can become ruined. Okay. Your batch. So where was it that you learned to heat the sugar? Is that from yes. that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is talk about that a little all bit, right. would you please? Because in, that's something I've never heard of. In all of my jam um, and jelly recipes, I do heat my um, my sugar in the oven on 250. Mm -hmm. In again, small batches, mm -hmm. the small batches um, to allow for the sugar to dissolve better during the heat mixing process. Amazing. So and it does make a difference. I'm, that I'm, makes a difference. I also, and again, it's the combination of very ripe raspberries with the just under ripe raspberries combined makes the best gel. Give it away. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't think you have anything. <laughs> I don't think you have anything it's, to worry about. Mm -hmm. I am sure you do the picking at just the right times, and everybody right. who's watching, if they decide to do it, mm -hmm. they're going to. Uh, 
hats off to you. you do, it, <laughs> They're going to make wonderful. the same mistakes you did. So. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And it is all practice. It's practice. Everybody who tries this jam is just like the. I mean, you know. My emphasis is on um, the fewer ingredients, the better. Yep. So the simpler, for instance, the better. This uh -huh. one, mm -hmm. this award-winning jam. Two ingredients. Uh, two ingredients: the raspberries and sugar. No, there's even though pectin is a natural sugar, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. that helps with gel. Mm -hmm. I don't use any mm -hmm. pectin okay. in, in any of my jams okay. or jellies. We're going to be walking people through uh, making these fabulous little jam blossoms that um, I came up with, adapted from a King Arthur um, baking uh, recipe. But I think um, if you would, I know it's going to be on the screen as well, but it's the issue of doing the testing in the freezer piece. Would you just talk about that from mm -hmm. the jam perspective so that if people decide they want to do this with grapes or with whatever else is coming along, mm -hmm. they would use your technique? Sure. So um, you put the sugar in, in the oven to warm at a low temp? Yes. And then, yes. Okay. And you basically, you boil the, the fruit for a one minute hard boil Okay. in a, a saucepan, a quart. Water? Uh, nope. Nope. Just, just fruit. The, just the okay. fruit. Okay. Uh, and once you, you use a potato masher and you mash the berries mm -hmm. and again a hard boil for a minute just the berries then add the sugar the mm -hmm. heated sugar mm -hmm. in stir to the jam using your masher okay. and you just stir as what you know as completely uh, thoroughly as you can and let that again come up to a full boil for five minutes mm -hmm. stirring the whole time yeah um, not not the whole time for it will come up to a boil then you stir it down We'll come up to another boil, okay. stir it down okay. um, to prevent a disaster on your stove. And then after exactly five minutes, remove, remove your pan mm -hmm. um, to a dish towel. So don't put it on your cold granite, just put it on a dish towel. And take a saucer out of the freezer mm -hmm. that you've put in, mm -hmm. take a spoon, measure out just a little bit, a teaspoon, put on it the on frozen your plate. frozen plate, okay. put it back in the freezer, time it for two minutes, uh -huh. take the saucer out and turn it on its side, and if it droops, if it's slugs, <laughs> I say <laughs> slugs, it should not run off the saucer. Okay. It should just It should droop. slug. Slug. Yeah, like a snail sort of. Call. Right, yeah. just yeah. droop a little bit, and you're done. You're good. Wow. So your jam is ready. It will um, form a gel mm -hmm. at that point. And it's you, natural pectin. Yeah. It's just natural, the, the mm -hmm. sugar and the mm -hmm. fruit. Mm -hmm. And at that point, you would process your mm -hmm. uh, canning, your jars, um, okay. heated. You've sterilized your jars. Mm -hmm. You've boiled your lids in mm -hmm. um, uh, your lids and rings yep. and bands and for five minutes. And then you, jar, you yep. put your jelly in the jar, mm -hmm. cover them, not completely tight, mm -hmm. not tight, tight, just so they close, they're almost closed, and then you do a water bath for five minutes. Okay. And that's, again, that would be for a uh, half pint for this, okay. this size. Okay. Half pint, okay. Half pint. Yes. Yes. Correct. Yeah, eight ounces, I think. So five minutes for this. If you do the larger, mm -hmm. um, I would do 10 minutes mm -hmm. for the larger one. Mm -hmm. The smaller little jelly jar that I use, the half, Mm -hmm. I also do for five minutes. Okay. So, okay. and then let it just sit on the counter. Don't touch it oh, for a hard. few hours, yes. and then you can tighten your mm -hmm. bands and mm -hmm. test. Test always test. This is the key: is if you push down that button mm -hmm. in the middle, as long as it's depressed, yep. then you have a good seal. Okay. If uh, I forgot to mention too, it's important to wipe off the top of the rim before you put the lid on right. um, in the ring, okay. because otherwise you could. Um, prevent getting a good seal okay. if you have something on the top, if okay. you have your jelly on the top of the jar. Okay. So once you do that, um, check for that, that. button mm -hmm. and um, it's good shelf to stable. Go. Shelf stable, up to two or, years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet. Mm -hmm. I don't think it that's going to last. No, it is, it is. <laughs> I should have taken a picture of my, my um, 
storage area downstairs with all my canning, all my jars. That's okay. Yeah, you can still do that. You, you can, can still no, put it on. It's okay. Two years later, we're um, still pulling, pulling things. Well, out. you still got butternut squash too, that's so right. that the raccoons <laughs> haven't gotten. That's I right. know that that sounds like a lot to do. You know that. Um, mm -hmm. I I certainly understand, given you know the state of the state and where we all are in this world and what we have to do with families and everything else, mm -hmm. friends. Um, but the results for this are so spectacular mm -hmm. that I, I can't imagine saying I'm not going to do it. I mean, mm -hmm. this is just so unbelievably good. And uh, I really do thank you for sharing it with me because, uh, and with audience and with the, the mm -hmm. people who are viewing thank us, um, I think it's really something that is quite remarkable. I mean, it is a product, and believe me, you know, mm -hmm. in my 40 plus years of cooking and teaching and writing about food, there are few products that really make me go, oh, 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 oh. and that, and this is one of them. Thanks. We're going to stop right now and move into the kitchen, move back to the kitchen, and uh, do some cooking. So please stay with us. Okay. So here we are in the kitchen, as opposed to being in front of the kitchen. Right. <laughs> uh, and uh, I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about products here because I think that's important. Mm -hmm. um, certainly, we've you know, raved about uh, your one product that you're contributing <laughs> here um, and some of the others that you brought too. Um, but we have a very simple dough. What this dough is, is uh, I think a cup of flour, but that's the last ingredient. So all you do is put in a mixer a softened stick of unsalted butter. Mm -hmm. I always use unsalted butter. I didn't used to use it, um, and I've been baking for like 45 years, but uh, I think that in the past 10 years I've discovered what a difference <laughs> good quality um, unsalted butter makes uh, in, uh, in baking. So that and a pinch of salt, but just a pinch, uh, and a quarter of a teaspoon of almond, oh, one teaspoon of vanilla, good vanilla extract, and a quarter of a teaspoon of the almond extract. And uh, be very careful with this. Sometimes I even just do a, dr a drop or two, mm. because almond extract, can, I've had this for years. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to just get better as it as it sits and mm. smells mm -hmm. lovely, but it's uh, um, it's very very strong and it can very quickly turn a mm -hmm. dish. Uh, so um, so good quality almond extract, good quality vanilla, and uh, and that's it. Mm -hmm. And unbleached flour. I use King Arthur unbleached all purpose. Um, you could probably use a Pillsbury or one of those, but uh, I prefer King Arthur. I think it's a, a nice product. I like what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's what I use. So that all gets mixed together. And then what happens is you've got your dough right here, and I'm going to show you what comes next. Vicki can mm -hmm. start to roll these pieces mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. into balls. And I'm going to show you how I do this. And this has been refrigerated since yesterday, so I made it yesterday. And cut it in half. I find it easiest to, you can certainly scoop it. That's what the recipe actually calls for from the King Arthur website. You can scoop it with a little tablespoon or one of those cookie scoops. But I find that this gives me more even <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm laughing because I'm saying more even portions as I look at that. <laughs> <laughs> see this little baby one in addition to all the big ones. But anyway. I'll take a little from Yeah, this you one. know what I mean, sort of, mm -hmm. you know. I always say, like, do as I <laughs> do as I say, not as I do. But that's not very good for teaching cooking. All right, so here we have um, half the dough. And this is going to make 10 cookies. Uh, this recipe actually makes a, a good... Um, 20 to 24, depending on the size of, of what you do. Okay, so we could use a rolling pin, but I really don't think I need it. So I'm going to squish this into uh, a rectangle. There we go. Okay. All right, and now, just before I do that, I'm going to have Vicki take her little balls here, the blossoms, mm -hmm. and we're going to flatten each one with a, um, something that is hopefully coated in either sugar or flour. I'm using the sugar, powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I misspoke. One of the things I said, I said the butter, the two extracts, a pinch of salt, 
and a quarter of a cup of powdered sugar. And that's the sugar that you mm -hmm. use actually in the cookies. And then you add the flour after you have mixed all that together. The recipe will be online. Uh, so once again, because I'm not doing it, I'm just talking about it. It's uh, going to be probably a little different, uh, more difficult to visualize. So we've got these down. And we're just going to squish each of those to about uh, a half an inch. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to bake these, Vicki. So one of the things about baking cookies is that you want to make sure you have them evenly spread all over the mm -hmm. place. So you can uh, move that move them away. and move, move them around a little bit so that they all brown evenly mm -hmm. and they all cook essentially the same amount. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Good. And you want me to flip these after? Um, no, it depends on how much is on there. really okay. doesn't matter. You can flip them or not. Um, sometimes I don't like to have the white sugar on it, but okay. you know, if you do flour, it's, it's really up to you. Mm -hmm. They're so good anyway that it really doesn't matter um, what they look like <laughs> right? <laughs> because they're that good. Okay, so here's my dough. Yeah, see this seems a little sticky. Okay. And we're using sugar for that, the powdered sugar, but you could use granulated sugar. You could use uh, flour, you could use um, some butter, you could use some light oil. You could use some of that spray, the lecithin baking spray if you mm -hmm. wanted. All right, so here we have this. I'm just gonna... gonna pop this in the oven, or should I wait? No, pop that in the oven. So there we have our batch ready to go. Okay, so this is probably about a three quarters of an inch. All right, and then I'm going to cut it into 20 pieces, and I'm not going to be as fancy as I should be, and then set the timer for 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. Using a ruler, I'm just going to use my eyes, so I'm going to figure out I'm going to do five in one direction, five pieces, and then four in the other to get, uh, if I were using the whole dough, so I'm going to do five, I'm going to do 10. Is this right? 20. You want 20? I want 20. Mm -hmm. um, I want 20. So I'm going to do so. Oh, I see. You did. Okay. So 10, because we only used half. I don't know, because I'm on camera and I'm live. I'm just not thinking, and it's not sort of all working together, but I think we'll figure mm -hmm. it out. If we have to go back and redo it, we will do that. Just so, that. five. Mm -hmm. And then we did four. Yeah, so you get 20 out of this. All right, you need another cookie sheet, my dear. With parchment? Mm-hmm. And some of these are going to be a little it's smaller. smaller. So I'm going to go back here so you can edit it and make it, fix it up. Um, so we have uh, this batch of cookie dough, which is a quarter of a cup of sugar, the extracts that I've already talked about, a stick of butter, and a little bit of salt. And you mix that to make this dough. This dough, um, then uh, you can cut it into 20 and 20. So it makes about 36, between 36 and 40 cookies. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing here. You could make them larger. Um, I am loath to use my raspberry jam. <laughs> so I try to keep them a little slower. Mm -hmm. But this recipe will make approximately three dozen. Mm -hmm. OK? Mm -hmm. All right. So we are now just cutting this like this. Mm -hmm. This is nice because you can do this in advance. Oh. Um, I mean, obviously, you can make the dough in advance and let it sit in the refrigerator. You could also do up to this part and cover it loosely with foil or um, saran wrap oh. and do it again. Um, uh, cover it and freeze it, chill it. I don't think I would freeze these. Um, but you probably could freeze them, don't you think? I think, you, I, I think so. Freeze them before yeah. you put the jam yeah. and then yeah. cook them. Now, some people may be saying, you know, I think I, what I want to do with this is um, make it into a, um, a roll, a slight, uh, you know, a roll that you roll up the dough oh. and do a slice and bake. And you could do that, but you really want the puffiness. You really want these to get pretty puffy in terms of um, being able to then fill them mm -hmm. with the indentation. Right. So after we're done with uh, um, getting them ready to go and getting them in the uh, 
flattened. Okay. Um, then as soon as they come out, after 10 minutes, um, we're going to make a little indentation with the top of this little ma uh, maple flavor bottle, but you could use, um, I don't want to be an ad for nips, but. Well, the, a bottle cap, right. A, a bottle, bottle cap, cap, but it's really a tiny one. Right. Um, you know, I'm going to try the next batch. I'm going to try to make them a little, um, a little bigger. Let's see what, how that mm. works. Mm -hmm. We can play with that, okay? And what you want to be careful about is to not, see if you can not get the edges mm. to, to Quick, fray. Quick. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that you can also, if you need to, just even use your fingers to mm -hmm. do that mm -hmm. if you find that you're getting too much oh, flatness. Oh, I see because that. you want to be able to have the puffiness to be able to fill mm -hmm. the jam in the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here with um, another half of the dough, I'm going to... I'm going to do this. I'm going to do six cookies. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Six of them. Big, beautiful cookies. I'll take those home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wanted your husband I, to come and be part of the audience. I, know, I he told him that's how he's going to get his cookies, <laughs> but I figured that you'd take him some. So, All right. So here we have this a little flatter. This is the best part about cooking and baking and having fun. Yes. And trying new things. Oh, this is like. So, just eyeballing this. And we'll see how this comes out. These will probably, these cookies cook for about 10 minutes at 375. So, I'm thinking that these, the larger ones that we're doing here, would probably be. Um, about 12 minutes, but we'll see. Okay. Okay. So you can see these are significantly different. Mm. Yes. Okay. But because Vicki bought me, brought me another jar of jam, I'm going to share all my seeds with everybody. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I know. I know. It's just such a product, really. Oh. It truly is. Thank you. It's a labor of love. Oh, it sure is. How are we doing that? Ah. Okay. That you can do it with your hands. Just yeah. put it back together. It's a nice dough. It's a workable dough. This dough has been sitting out at room temp too, mm. Vicki. Okay. So um, if it were, um, you know, straight from the refrigerator, it would probably be a little All better. Right. Now, one of the things, if you Google this recipe on King Arthur's website. Uh, they call for a glaze, which would be taking your powdered sugar and adding a little bit of milk to it, maybe a, a s tiny, tiny, tiny drop of either vanilla or almond extract, and whisking that together to make a pourable mm. liquid, um, and, uh, and then uh, putting it in a, uh, either a pastry bag or in the old uh, Ziploc bag right. routine you where you cut off the corner right. and, and do that. So, uh, and drizzle. Oh. But I thought that was a lot to do. Vicki right. would probably do it because she seems to be <laughs> more. <laughs> I don't know, these days, let's see, it's September. <laughs> Garden has been producing. I'm, I'm almost You're ready busy. to hang up my apron. <laughs> <laughs> probably. I can imagine. I can imagine. Plus, you have a new grandbaby. Yes. Bl six brand days. new six days. Our very first. He's beautiful. He's going to have a good time in the garden. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. One so, more? No, because these are a little bit. Well, this one. Bigger. Yeah, one more. Okay. And you know, these things taste so good that I don't think it really matters how perfect they are or not. And we're not working for Nabisco, are we? <laughs> so we're okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to get another uh, cookie sheet. I had one. It's in the oven. Did you have three? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where's my cookie sheet? <laughs> it's in the oven. All right, and so these are going to sit here. Almost uh, less than three minutes. Okay, so. let's take a look and see what they're doing. All right. So, interestingly enough, my larger ones don't look any different than the small ones. Well, they don't. <laughs> I don't know. We are just having ourselves a little post-Labor Day, yes. whatever, here. 
Now, I did say to Vicki, and I think I mentioned earlier, that I am so enamored of this jam that I am counting, trying, thinking of counting the seeds so that I don't use it all up in each of my cookies here. Uh, but, uh, um, I think counting that would be a little too pedantic. That would be. <laughs> even for me. Even for me. I have plenty. So. Okay, so now if you would take those off and put them on the plate. Mm -hmm. So see how these got so nicely browned around mm -hmm. the edges? And, uh, and we have our one to sample there. I think our okay. audience needs, needs okay. a... Let's leave it off the plate. Off the... Oh, this one. The, yeah. The cook's treat. Yes. What about that one? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to add that on. It has a little smudge on it. I don't care. Smudges are good. Okay. All right. I think that we are pretty close to wrapping this up. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh. <laughs> okay. Swoon worthy. Yes? Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've given Thank us you a lot of information. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate what you, you do. And uh, come back and see us next time. Next time, we're going to be talking about a new cookbook that's coming out of Woods Hole. So uh, I do hope that you can join us. Thank you for watching. See you Thank in you. October. Mm -hmm.